Kenai Fjords National Park is over 600,000 acres in southern Alaska and is home to countless glaciers, one of the largest ice fields in the United States, and one of the best wildlife boat tours I have ever been on. On the seven hour trip, we saw dozens of whales, otters, puffins, and even a bald eagle as we cruised past glaciers while exploring the national park. Here's the full video and be sure to stay to the end where we get to witness humpback whales doing a rare and unpredictable bubble net feeding. You don't wanna miss that and let's jump into it. Here we go, we're gonna board and head out on our tour of Kenai Fjords National Park. Are you excited? Can't wait, can't I'm excited. wait. excited. We were staying in Anchorage and so we took the two hour drive down to Seward and then the seven and a half hour boat with major marine tours. Here we go. They guaranteed us to see a glacier <laughs> and water. <laughs> They're still there, they said. Yeah. We boarded the boat and there was lots of indoor and outdoor seating. Here's the route we're taking, or this middle one going all the way up here to two different glaciers. They gave us an introduction to safety and all the animals we could possibly see on the tour and then we headed out. Also, side note, if you wanna do this from Anchorage, you can take a shorter tour and you can actually take the train from Anchorage down and back, which my parents did, and they said it was incredible. But we wanted to take a longer tour, so that's why we did this one. <laughs> Is it cold? It's just a little bit. <laughs> Also, this was in the middle of July and it was so incredibly cold, even with multiple layers on. Be sure to bundle up and to bring gloves and things like that. Our first animal sighting was a couple of sea otters right as we were leaving the harbor. These guys were used to the boats going by so they didn't dive down like the other ones we saw did. The first hour and a half of this tour is beautiful but relatively anticlimactic as you're going out of Resurrection Bay and into the Gulf of Alaska. There were a few glaciers off in the distance and some big mountains hidden behind the clouds, but that was all we saw. Our guide told us a lot more about the national park and about all the snack and drink options on the boat, as well as the fact that they were going to pull up some ice from the glacier later and make glacier margaritas. Even with the sun coming out for a little bit, it was still incredibly cold and Amy and I were basically the only people who were crazy enough to sit on the top of the boat. As we entered the Gulf of Alaska, we were rewarded though with whales coming into view. We saw three humpback whales here and they were pretty active, smacking their tails and coming up for air. One of the best parts about our tour was that they were really trying to let us enjoy the wildlife, so we would sit and watch some of these whales for five to 10 minutes. After hanging out with the whales for a little bit longer, the boat continued for another 30 or so minutes uninterrupted before we made a turn into Ialic Bay. Also note that if you get seasick, be prepared with whatever medication you use because the Gulf of Alaska area was definitely choppy when we went and they said it was actually a pretty good day other than the overcast weather. During this section of the journey, we saw some porpoise in front of the boat, but they're really hard to photograph as they leave pretty quickly. This is basically just a time to look out on the staggering landscape as you make your way back to the glacier. Like a lot of the Alaska landscape, I was blown away by how beautiful it was. This was especially true in this section as there were so many waterfalls on both sides of us going into the water below. It's crazy that these are just normal waterfalls and not even destinations. Eventually though, the main destination, Ialik Glacier, came into view. As we approached this glacier, it was truly hard to understand the size. They told us it was about a mile long and three to 400 feet high. This glacier is one of a dozen that drains the Harding Ice Field, which is also located in the National Park. It is a relatively active glacier and is usually the most active in May and June. Everybody was out on the deck watching to see if there would be any calving, but we didn't see any on this trip. This is our first of two glaciers, but they told us that there's also another one right here called Surprise Glacier. It was fun to see this affectionately titled Surprise Glacier right next to the main one, and it had a pretty awesome waterfall that was coming off of the bottom. How can you ever complain when you're sitting in a boat and you get to see a glacier on both sides? It's our first glacier and that was an awesome one. I'm gonna go have something to eat. It is so cold. I can't even see your breath, it's so cold. As we head to our second glacier, getting some lunch, got a 
turkey sandwich, some chips, and a bar. Mine had hummus. <laughs> Where's my hummus held? <laughs> you didn't get hummus. I got hummus. I had a veggie. <laughs> When you book your tour, you pick your lunch in advance and then you just pick it up and eat on the bottom of the boat. It was so incredibly cold that we spent the next 45 minutes inside of the boat just watching the scenery go by us through the window. Eventually I braved the cold again and headed up to the top as we made our way up the arm towards Holgate Glacier. It wasn't great weather for us, but the glacier was stunning as we got close. This one's only a half mile long, but it's actually taller at around 500 feet tall. The major difference between the six and a half and the seven and a half hour tour is that you get to see both of these glaciers instead of them just choosing one for you to see. Again, we were hoping to see some calving, but we didn't see any here. That being said, this was one of the most impressive glaciers I think I've ever seen. It just felt so imposing with how tall it was. This is also where they grabbed some of the glacier ice to bring up for us to see and to make the margaritas from. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Here you can see the, the two different types. There's the smooth surface and there's actually the honeycomb. In total, we spent about 20 minutes at this glacier as well before we had to start heading on. Of course, I would have loved to have been there for longer, but it was still a pretty generous amount of time. What do you got? Glacier margarita with glacier ice. From that glacier right there. Cheers. Very sweet, we got Sure, it's a little silly to do things like this, but when I reminisce on trips like this, it's just crazy to think back on the fact that we were drinking a margarita that had ice from the glacier that we were looking at from our boat. It's just one of those stories you never thought you'd have in your life. The next 45 minutes or so was just heading back through the bay towards the Gulf of Alaska and towards our next destination, the Chiswell Islands. And in case you were wondering, it was still cold. Almost to our last stop of the trip, the Chiswell Islands, it is very cold. <laughs> These islands are located about 35 miles off the coast of Seward. They are very important as a bird sanctuary and for marine wildlife. It's fun to boat around these islands as they look like they're shooting up out of the water vertically and there's no beach or anything, it's just rocks. As we got closer, you could see the thousands of birds that were perched along the rocks. If you're someone who's into bird watching, this is probably worth the trip by itself. Plus, there was a really cool cave that waves were just exploding out of and that we stopped at for a little while. On another island, we saw a bald eagle, and then yet on another island, we saw a large group of stellar sea lions which are endangered. It's always fun to see these guys fighting and barking at each other while they just lay out on the rocks. As we cruised around a few more islands, our guide told us that it was time to start heading back to Seward. We just assumed that the trip was over, but we were actually greeted with the best thing we saw the entire day. On the way back, we saw a boat out in the distance watching a whale, and we went over to it as quickly as we could. When we got there, we noticed there were dozens of humpback whales there and they were actually participating in something called bubble net feeding. In this type of feeding, one whale blows bubbles that start to stun the fish and force them to the surface. The other whales basically swim around them to kind of keep them in a circle and then all of the whales just open their mouths and go right up through the school of fish, catching as many as they possibly can. We were lucky enough to see this six times before we had to leave. One of the most incredible wildlife experiences I had in Alaska. Now we got about an hour and a half back, but that experience was incredible. As we took the one hour ride back to Seward, Amy and I just could not stop talking about how amazing it was to see the glaciers and to see all of the whales. It's something we'll never forget. After seven and a half hours, we have made it back to Seward. That was an incredible experience. I gave that a 10 out of 10. What about you? 100%. It was the most amazing wildlife experience I've probably ever had. 
Yeah, it was, it was incredible. If you're in the area, definitely do it. It's a long day on the boat, but it was it was definitely worth it for us. Sure. We'll see you on the next one.